If I really want to collect and use wild mushrooms as food, I should first know that some mushrooms can contain very deadly poisons. Some mushrooms can be very good for my health, even medicinal, but even a small piece of another mushroom can destroy my liver or kidney in just a few hours. It is really important to learn about mushrooms from multiple sources before collecting and consuming. In this video, I'm going to talk about mushrooms which I can easily identify, or mushrooms with biological properties that are unique, so that I have a low chance at mistaking or being deceived by other toxic mushrooms. I'm going to talk about wild mushrooms that I collect and consume, which have no deadly doppelgangers or lookalikes to eatable mushrooms that can be mistaken. Before I start, I will give you a general list of some of the steps I take to avoid being poisoned when I am foraging mushrooms for food, especially since I am a beginner. Step one. I never collect or consume mushrooms of the Amanita family or mushrooms growing from vulva. I always look for the vulva at the base of the stem or worse on the cap. The Amanita family most dangerous or deadly poisonous fungi is the deadly cap or destroying angel. As a beginner, I also would not collect any gilled mushrooms at all, except just a few. And I will talk about those in this video later because of the very high chance to make a mistake. Step two, I never use gilled mushrooms for food with green spore prints, such as chlorophyllum. Step three, I avoid gilled mushrooms belonging to Cortinaris, Hebaloma, Gallerina, Antiloma, or Lipiota families. There are many poisonous mushrooms within this family, and it is really hard to identify without lifelong experience or microscopical features. Step four, I never eat mushrooms that glow in the dark or any luminescent mushrooms. Step five, I never collect or eat red or orange poor mushrooms belonging to the Belotus family. I would leave these mushrooms to admire, but definitely not to eat. Step six, if I'm trying to eat a wild mushroom for the first time, I always start with small amounts and I cook the mushrooms well thoroughly. I always keep one sample in the fridge uncooked in case of any wrong identification. I give 48 hours gap between eating any other mushroom species, and I do not mix different species of mushrooms if I consume them for the first time. Following this rule, I reduce significantly my chances of being intoxicated by any poisonous mushrooms. As a beginner, I start with a small list of mushrooms that are easy to identify without any deadly doubles or any lookalike mushrooms. Please note all the mushrooms shown in this video were collected in Canada and they are species that grow in North America. Some species are closely related or are the same to the species grown in Europe or Russia or China, but may be different to the similar mushrooms in other countries. I always keep in mind that habitat and climate range of the mushrooms is very important and I never collect mushrooms near roads or highways or any contaminated areas. Because mushrooms are re reducents or decomposers and they easily accumulate environmental toxins and pesticides. Now after I reveal all the precautions I take, I can start with my list of porous mushrooms without gills that I can simply identify and collect for food. The first mushroom on my list is, of course, the king mushrooms, or king bolete, Boletus sedilis or porcini. Probably the most delicious, highly prized with a sweet and nutty taste. The cap is 8 to 25 centimeter convex. The color is purple, pale brown, cinnamon brown, or reddish brown. The surface is smooth or bumpy, slightly wrinkled. Flesh white, filled, thick, and unchanged when cut. The pores white when young, then changing to olive green or olive brown, brushing dark olive brown. Tubes are the same color, up to two centimeters deep. Stem up to 25 centimeters long and two to four centimeters wide. Sometimes bulbous at the base with a fine white netted mesh, partly or entirely. Spore print is olive yellow. Mycorrhizal mushrooms grow under conifer and are widespread. Porcini does have a lookalike, Tylopilus filius, but fortunately that mushroom is not toxic if eaten, and nobody would eat it anyway because it does have a very strong, bitter taste. To separate this unwanted mushroom from my collection, I simply have to check the tube, and if I see that instead of the olive greenish tubes, there's a pinkish brown tube, 
and the spore print is pinkish brown, that means I picked by mistake the bitter bolete. False porcini also bruises pinkish colors, and that feature can also help me identify even young species. Tylopelis or bitter bolete also have a rough net around the stem that differs from the fine net of real porcini. Boletus idilus is safe even to eat raw and can be used for salads or be marinated, salted, fried, or dried for future use. Another edible representative of the Boletus family is Old Man of the Woods. If I see this mushroom on the forest floor, I can easily identify without any mistake. The cap is 12 centimeters in diameter, can reach 20 centimeters, and is woolly or hairy when young. With age, the convex cap becomes flatter and firmer and is covered with dark gray to black pyramid-type protrusions, appearing as scales against the creamier tan background. The flesh is white, but when exposed to air, will turn pink, orange-red, and then slowly dark gray or black. Gills are absent. Tubes and pores are found under the cap. As a boletus mushroom, it has porous and spongy tubes with large pores. Spores develop inside these tubes. The pores under the cap are hexagonal, colored off-white and become gray with maturation. Spore print color is dark brown to black. The stem is one to two centimeters in diameter, up to 14 centimeters tall, colored gray with tufts. The stem may have remains of skirting from the cap from when it was young. Some people describe the taste as earthy. I describe it as an old cheese. And the habitat is common in woodland, usually found in decadous forests, can be found under conifers. Fruits are late summer to early fall, August to October. Another representative of the Boletus family is very easy to find is the painted Celius or Celius spragli. This beautiful mushroom is a joy to find. In many field guides, it is listed as edible, and I really enjoy eating this mushroom fried with garlic. Compared to other Celia species, this one does not produce sticky mucus that can cause allergic reactions or dermatitis in some people, and the skin does not need to be peeled off before cooking, like, for example, on in another good source of food, the Celia granulatus. The cap is 3 to 12 centimeters, convex with an enrolled margin when young, but soon broadly convex to flat, covered with large pinkish to brick rose scuffles, whitish partial veil tissue often hanging from the margin. The margin is the outermost edge of the cap, and the, this veil tissue is dry and it fades with age. The pore surface is covered with a whitish partial veil when young, yellow and gets darker with age, sometimes slightly running down the stem, sometimes bruising reddish or brownish. The spores are small to large, 0.5 to 5 millimeters across, vaguely radially arranged, tubes 48 millimeters deep. The stem is 4 to 12 centimeters long and 1 to 2.5 centimeters thick, equal or sometimes wider in the base, without glandular dots, but shaggy with scruffles below the whitish to grayish ring, not bruising. The flesh is yellow throughout, sometimes staining slightly reddish, and the spore print is yellow-brown. Another large group of edible porous mushrooms belonging to the Boletus family is genus Lexinum. All of them have a feature that can help identify them, and all of them are edible. Their main distinguishing feature is the small, rigid projections, or scabers, that give a rough texture to their stalks. The genus name was coined from the Italian lecino for a type of rough stemmed bolete. The genus has a widespread distribution, especially in north temperate regions, and contains about 75 species. Lexinum species are generally found in the woodlands of Europe, Asia, and North America, forming ectomycorrhizal associations with trees. Most Lexinum species are mycorrhizal specialists, associating with trees of a single genus. Lexinum with bright red cap or bright orange cap are known to have some poisoning effects on people. The species also needs to be cooked well or else it may cause vomiting or other negative effects. Some have reported gastrointestinal upset after eating the species. Adorable mushrooms normally appear after rainy warm weather. 
It is quite easy to collect a full bucket of different Lexinum for just a couple of hours. Sport prints different shades of brown from olive brown to darker brown. Pores are off-white when young, then shades of brown when old. Another diagnostic feature is bluing or blackened pigmentation at the base of the stem when brushed or cut. Taste is not distinctive, but I like to fry with garlic and onion or marinated. There are many other species of the Belitis family I know that can be a good source of food, but I personally haven't tried them yet and I'm not going to talk about them for now. They're not yet on my list. Another group of edible fungi on my list is the group of tooth fungi. Their mushrooms produce their spores in tooth-like structures that make them really easy to identify. They do not have any poisonous doubles or any toxic lookalikes. Hydnum repandum, commonly known as sweet tooth, wood hedgehog, or hedgehog mushroom. This fungus produces fruit bodies, or mushrooms, that are characterized by their spore-bearing structures in the form of spines rather than gills, which hang down from the underside of the cap. The cap is dry, colored yellow, to light orange, to brown, and often develops an irregular shape, especially when it has grown closely crowded with adjacent fruit bodies. The mushroom tissue is white with a pleasant odor and a spicy or bitter taste. All parts of the mushroom stain orange with age or when bruised. The spore print is white. It is a mycorrhizal fungus where it fruits singly or in close groups in coniferous or decadous woodland. This is an edible choice, although mature specimens can develop a bitter taste. It has no poisonous lookalikes, as mentioned previously. Mushrooms are collected and sold in local markets of Europe and Canada. If I can find the right location, I can simply collect five to eight kilograms, then I clean them and store them in the freezer for later use. If I'm lucky enough to see Hericium Americanum, or bear's head tooth, on a tree and I can reach it, you better believe I'm gonna grab it right away. This mushroom is not only a good choice for food, but it is also a medicinal mushroom known to have neuroprotective effects and has shown potential in treating Alzheimer's disease and dementia. Hedicium has no cap, but multiple caps branch from a common stem, all of them entirely covered with long, soft, hair-like or noodle-like spines. The surface is white when young and it yellows with age. The interior flesh is white and does not change when cut. No gills. Instead, the spores are borne on soft spines all over the outer surface of the caps. These spines are much longer than in most other Hedicium species. Stem is branched, except when very immature, and it's difficult to see because of the teeth. The spore color is white, and Hedicium grows on dead or sometimes living wood, usually of hardwood species in eastern North America. Like other members of its genus, its taste is somewhat reminiscent of fish or shellfish, and can be used to make crab cakes and soups, as well as being simply pan-fried. Another closely related species that looks alike is Hedicium corolloids, or comb tooth, or coral tooth. And it has a very similar branching structure, but its spine remains very short. It does indeed resemble a branched hard coral, or possibly a small tree branch feathered with hoarfrost. It's also a good edible choice and can be found at a nearby tree within the same area as bear's head tooth. If I find more mushrooms I can eat right away, I store extra in the freezer for future use. In the second video, I will share with you what kind of edible puffball mushrooms, polypore mushrooms, and finally gilled mushrooms you can collect and eat without fear of making any life-threatening mistakes. So please stay tuned, another part of this video will be coming soon.